Therefore, it's time for member statements. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. I rise to uh, speak on GO Transit expansion. As a uh, daily user of GO Transit, I can tell you with certainty that Durham Region needs infrastructure help. A recently released study showed very positive numbers if GO expands in Durham Region. And the study findings indicate uh, it would generate $1.1 billion in transit-oriented walkable urban development, up to 20,000 new permanent jobs and 6,000 new homes. Durham Region is growing at an unprecedented rate, Speaker, but with the growth comes infrastructure obstacles. Durham is lagging behind other areas of the GTA and has waited patiently and long enough for expanded all-day GO Transit services. Our municipal partners, the region of Durham, business leaders and colleges and universities are all on board. We all know that GO Transit extension is crucial, will lend transportation wealth for thousands of com commuters and will mobilize private sector investment in our economy. Speaker, the time for action is now. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from London, Fanshawe. Speaker, today I am using my time to speak to an issue of grave importance in my riding of London Fanshawe. We have seen many articles, incidents and questions being brought forward in this House due to the lack of mental health funding and supports in this province. Community-based service providers in the child and youth mental health system do not have the resources to, to keep up with the needs for care. Yet despite the rapidly growing and wildly accepted increase in demand, child and youth mental health centres do not have the base funding increases in over a decade. The reality is that lack of priority funding for mental health is creating a crisis in our communities. When I tabled Bill 95, my intention was to help stem the problem by asking this government to recognize the efforts of the All-Party Select Committee on Mental Health and the extensive consultation they conducted across the province. My community is in dire need, and I am focused on protecting all vulnerable Ontarians suffering from mental illness and addictions by ensuring they have access to programs and services regardless of where they live. Therefore, I am urging this government to call Bill 95 forward rather than let it languish in committee. It's time that we get serious about the challenges in mental health in this province and stop putting Band-Aid solutions on vital issues in our communities. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I would like to start off by offering my condolences to the millions of friends and family members mourning the tragic deaths of loved ones at the hands of the devastating earthquake that took place in Ecuador this past weekend. Earlier this morning, I attended a press conference at City Hall with Ms. Mr. Nicholas Trujillo, Ambassador of Ecuador in Canada, and City Councillor Cesar Palacio, where I was able to extend my condolences to the people of Ecuador on behalf of our Premier Kathleen Wynne and the Government of Ontario. More than 3,500 people were injured in Saturday's 7.8 magnitude quake, which ripped apart buildings and roads and knocked out power along the Pacific coastline, and that number is rising. Ecuador's earthquake death toll rose to 413, including a Canadian woman and her 12-year-old son. This is the greatest tra tragedy in Ecuador in the last 67 years and the strongest earthquake to hit Ecuador since 1979. While world events too often showcase human violence and cruelty, let us focus today on the solidarity, compassion and mutual assistance displayed in the aftermath of this tragedy. There is a large population of Ecuadorian Canadians in Ontario. In Toronto, the Ecuadorian community is the largest, with over 100,000 residents. Many of those reside in my riding of Davenport and have many friends and family in Ecuador. My office will be assisting with plans for upcoming fundraisers to help those who have lost so much as a result of this tragedy, as well as in connecting people that want to make donations through the Red Cross and the Ecuadorian Embassy. We must stand by the Ecuadorians as they build a more robust society which will serve as an example of hope and solidarity. I am truly devastated by the tragic aftermath and pledge to work with organizations in my riding to assist Ecuador on its road to recovery, which we know will be long and difficult. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Thank you for the member's statements. The member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yes, well, thank you, Speaker. Uh, the Waterloo Wellington Science and Engineering Fair is an annual event that brings together students in grades 7 to 12 from my region. Speaker, uh, these are the best young scientific minds in our region. Earlier this month, over 200 projects involving over 300 students from about 30 different schools gathered at Binghamton's in Kitchener. Over 120 judges from local schools, universities, colleges, business, and, as, and industries volunteered their time to judge the projects and provide valuable feedback to the students. Speaker, the students gained so much more value than simply having their projects judged according to this national standard. Their time at the fair provides students with the opportunity to hone in on their presentation skills by demonstrating their projects to each other and the general public. Participation in their fair also allows equal time to take part in science-related educational activities. I congratulate all student participants as the competition is quite rigorous. However, Speaker, one participant in particular did catch my attention, Ruth Meyer of Centennial Public School in Waterloo. Her project, The Impact of Modeled Signaling in Roundabouts, made me proud as an MPP knowing that legislation we debate here at Queen's Park resonates with the youth in our ridings. I'd like to uh, congratulate, of course, all of the winners as they represent our region at the Canada-wide Science Fair in Montreal. Speaker, I sincerely congratulate all participants and volunteers of the Waterloo Wellington Science and Engineering Fair, and I would also like to thank the community members who encourage the development of scientific and technological talents of young people in our region. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Temiskimi, Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. Since being elected, I've spent a lot of my time, my staff spent a lot of my time fixing outrageous hydro bills. I'm glad to say some of those really outrageous ones have gone. But what we're left now with the heartbreaking job of telling people no, their hydro bill's actually accurate, but still outrageous. <laughs> and, and now they hear that because the province is using less power, because other people can't pay for their hydro, their hydro bills are going up. So what about conservation? And this morning we hear the, from the Minister of Finance that actually hydro, he seemed to imply that hydro bills were going down and they used you know, the average over Ontario. Well, you should look at rural Ontario where we're paying the low density service charges where actually sometimes the service charges are higher than the actual power cost. Shame. People in rural Ontario, especially seniors and people living on fixed incomes, are in energy poverty, Speaker. And when other people, oh, that can't be. And I, one time I was here and the Minister of Energy saw that's just going up by a cup of coffee. Whoa. Yeah. People are having to choose between what they eat and if they heat or if they one day have to cut the cord to one of the, what we thought was a necessity of life in a developed country. And people are going to have to start making those decisions. That's an incredible shame in a powerful province like Ontario. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Newmarket Aurora. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, in some communities, the first sign of spring is a robin hopping along or tulips poking through the snow. But in my wonderful riding of Newmarket Aurora, the first sign of spring is the Newmarket Order. and Aurora Home Shows. My community team and I had the pleasure of attending the Aurora, Aurora Home Show this past weekend at the Stronach Aurora uh, Recreation Complex, organized by the Aurora Chamber of Commerce. And just two weeks ago, we attended the 20th annual Newmarket Home Show at the Ray Twinney Recreation Complex, run by the Newmarket Chamber of Commerce. This year, over 5,500 people attended that show, making it the largest home show in York Region. Both the New Market and Aurora Home Shows offer visitors a one-stop shopping experience for home decor and renovations, real estate, financial services, health products, and ser health pro uh, product services, and more. Besides being a phenomenal way to start spring, these home shows are an important, uh, are very important to the businesses within our community. Uh, for some of the small businesses and vendors, both in Aurora and Newmarket, Mr. Speaker, I'm told they represent uh, up to 50% or more of their annual sales booked over a short weekend. Of course, the home shows are not just a place to buy uh, products and services for your home and health. They're social gatherings where neighbours reconnect after a long, dark winter. Speaker, I'd like to take uh, some time to thank the organizers, both with the Aurora Chamber of Commerce and the Newmarket Chamber of Commerce, for uh, pulling these fantastic shows together. Thank you. For the member's statement, the member from Sarnia Lampton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I rise today to remember 
Barbara Horner, who passed away on April 12, 2016, at the age of 81, a beloved mother, mother-in-law, grandmother, and great-grandmother. Barb was also a former councillor and mayor of the village of Point Edward, as well as past warden of Lambton County. Barbara Horner was first elected to the Point Edward Council in 1977 and served the village for a total of 18 years. In her political career, Barb was a trendsetter. She was the first female councillor, deputy reeve, Deputy Mayor, which all contributed to her accomplishing her ultimate goal of becoming the first female mayor of Point Edward from 1997 to the year 2000. In 1984, she was elected by her peers to become the first lady warden of Lambton County. Another highlight of Barb's life was being the chairman of the board of Lambton College for four consecutive years. This opportunity included a four-week Asian tour to open a relationship with China to establish an academic partnership with Lambton College, which still exists today. Barbara very much enjoyed her many years in politics. She often said most politicians were pleasant, outgoing people who were a pleasure to work with. During her term as mayor in 2000, her council simultaneously negotiated the opening of the Point Ever Casino and the first contract for OPP policing. I, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to express my condolences to the entire Horner family and the village of Point Edward and their loss. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. Last month, the Cambridge Chamber of Commerce gave those in my community of Cambridge an opportunity to recognize the contribution of local businesses and individuals to the continued growth and success of our community. The annual Business Excellence Award ceremony took place on March 24th. Winners of the Business Excellence Awards are businesses or individuals that have shown their commitment to positive business development, growth, and diversity within our city. Winners of this year's awards include Business of the Year, 1 to 49 employees, Bricks Works Academy, Business of the Year, over 50 employees, Farm Mutual Reinsurance Planning, Personal Business Achievement Award, Jen German Wright, whose daughter Meg Wright told me how she, proud she was of her mother. The new Venture of the Year Award, Fusion Cast. The Keith Taylor Memorial Award went to Lieutenant Colonel Ronald F. Gowing. The Young Op Entrepreneur of the Year, one of the more important ones for our young entrepreneurs, Stephanie Suley from Little Mushroom Catering. The WowCambridge.com Award to Shelby Frazier, Valet Car Wash Inc. The Environment Award, Excellence in Energy Conservation, went to the Toyota Motor Manufacturing Canada, Inc. The Chairs Award to Knapp Fasteners, Inc. The Lifetime Achievement Award, the Honourable Gary Goodyear. And finally, the Rotary Scholarship Award for Academic Excellence, Caitlin Beacock. Thank you so much uh, to all the winners for making sure that your businesses add immeasurably into our community. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last year, I was joined by my colleagues, the Minister of Health and MPP for Halton, to celebrate the groundbreaking for the expansion and modernization of Joseph Brand Hospital in my riding of Burlington. As part of a $370 million investment by the province, Joseph Brand is making significant renovations to give patients faster care, faster access to the right care. They are also constructing a seven-story patient tower. Based on best practices and evidence from other leading hospitals, this tower will contain new patient rooms, a new emergency department, state-of-the-art operating rooms. I recently had the pleasure of taking a guided tour of these rooms at a mock-up facility arranged by the hospital to showcase the kind of patient experience that we will achieve in our new community hospital. I was amazed to experience state-of-the-art design created to promote patient and family-centered care. Not only are these rooms designed to reduce the spread of infection, they are also designed for the future with the ability to adapt to new technology down the road. Residents are invited to tour these mock-up rooms at a public open house tomorrow from 5 to 7 p.m. Mr. Speaker, Burlington is fortunate to have a community hospital, one that not only serves the people who live in my riding, but one that's been built with pride by that same community, as my constituency office is located just down the street from this growing hospital. It has been a wonderful experience to see the progress each and every day. Together with the generous citizen donors of Burlington, the City of Burlington, our government is delivering on our promise to provide patients with faster access to the care they need close to home. And I'd like to thank everyone who's making it a reality. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. I beg